Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of No More Kids in Scientology. And in today's episode, you guys, we're going to talk about Mike Rinder. As you can see from the thumbnail, Mike Rinder um, has made a number of public statements that are very inconsistent with reality. And we thought it would be very actually helpful to bring those up and really figure out what in the literal hell is going on. So let's really react to this video and see what Mike Rinder is pitching to MSNBC. So just also take a look at um, the networks that have been in cahoots laundering the image of every single aspect of what we discuss in this channel every day. And he's the executive director of the Church of Scientology International Office of Special Affairs. Mr. Rinder, what, what are the biggest misconceptions about, do you think uh, Janet hit it on the head or do you think the misconceptions out there? Oh. I mean, right about now is giving Mike Rinder bobblehead vibes, just saying. I think there are a lot of misconceptions, Reed. Right? I think that probably the biggest misconception is that, that it's difficult to find out about Scientology. Well, you know what? I don't think that's a big misconception. I think that's the complete correct conception. It's very hard to find out about Scientology. I mean, and all of y'all can see right here next to Mike Rinder, examples of that course room-like setting that we discuss with Aaron growing up in Scientology video, discussing how kids were subjected to this exact environment that everyone can see here, playing right next to Mike Rinder as he really pitches and explains and really looks very, very stiff as a board and, you know, puts a fake smile on, put on the little, you know, the little suit This all it took for the corporate media to buy his pitch. They were like, oh, my God, you guys, he's wearing a suit. He really must be not viewing lies every time he opens his mouth. In fact, it's very easy. Anybody can walk into a bookstore. Anybody can walk into a library, get a book by L. Ron Hubbard, and find out all about Scientology. It's Isn't that great, you guys, that we have easily found as literally Aaron showed you all the level zero pack, right? Mike Rinder, if everyone goes and grabs that level zero pack, they would find what exactly? Routine zero A and zero B. If you could talk to a grapist, what would you talk about? If you were talking to a grapist about that, what would you say exactly? Why was that process run on me as a 12 year old, Mike Rinder? Why was that process done? Why were those questions being asked of me? Because that would be great for you to really be typing something up on your blog about that right about now. One of the things that makes Scientology so accessible, in fact, is that everything is written. Mr. Hubbard wrote a lot of books, and they contain the basic principles and the fundamental beliefs and practices of Scientology. Well, isn't that great, you guys? We finally do agree on something, Mike Rinder. And I think all of you in the chat might agree with Mike Rinder on this one aspect that he just let us in on. Everything is in the books that L1 Hubbard wrote. So the process that we talked about in our last video about what kids were subjected to, including but not limited to, if you were talking to a PDF file, what would you talk about? If you were talking to a PDF file about that, what would you say exactly? Why was that process run on underage kids at an industrial size scale, Mike Rinder? Why did L. Ron Hubbard pitch that? And how, in what world is that a religious situationship? In what world are you calling that a religious situationship? And uh, anybody can find out about them. Scientology means the study of truth. Isn't that great, you guys, that the corporate media is literally pitching 
this level of lies. Shout out to MSNBC lying through their teeth, putting up this quote that I guess Mike Rinder put up for himself. It's the study of truth. Imagine it should really be saying the study of lies, Mike Rinder, because right about now, this coverage of you blabbing your mouth to the corporate media about how everything should be so understandable if all they do is go and get a book. Were people really going to go and grab level zero pack for themselves if they stumbled into a library? Or was that type of um, classified information not shared until you were fully cleared? Because that would be great for you to really also explain. In what world is Scientology means the study of truth, MSNBC? By all means, this is your quote. Y'all grab the quote. Y'all had no pushback to the quote. Y'all went ahead and typed it on your mainstream media BS whitewash ridiculous clip that everyone can see for yourselves is literally not age well whatsoever. Can you be a Scientologist uh, and practice other religions like Judaism or Catholicism? Can you can you practice others? All right, you guys. And this is always the stupidest question anyone can have for themselves. Because again, adults that check into the hotel, the last thing they're thinking about is, oh, did I forget to pray to God today? Should I really go and do that right now? Do you think a man that goes and pays, including but not limited to $500 an hour to go get interrogated by, you know, Natalie Galbiati or, you know, Serge or, you know, all manner of other underage kids. Do you all really go and think, oh, I really need to do some Jewish situationships here. Oh, I really need to be doing some Christian situationships here. Oh, I really need to be doing some Hinduism situationships here at the hotel. I mean, really ask yourselves that question because that is just such a ridiculous, dumb question that the corporate media has asked ad nauseum as if they're not legitimizing a situation, a hotel that they don't even understand what in the hell is going on because apparently all it took is for Mike Rinder to dress up in his little suit and then the clownery was just, you know, taken very well. Oh, you really speak, you know, the corporate talking point talking head. So yeah, shout out to your bubble head. Well, sure you can. Although I, I think that the, the fundamental principles of Scientology are all-encompassing. They're pan-denominational. Uh, they are concepts of one's well-being as a spiritual being, how to attain spiritual enlightenment. How. To I mean, again, Mike Rinder, double-check your pitch. Double-check how a child being locked up against their will inside of a hotel room indefinitely is really getting you that type of spiritual enlightenment is how you're pitching it here. I mean, imagine this is what this man is pitching with a straight face. Spiritual enlightenment. Imagine being Mike Rinder, the pro bono publicist of L. Ron Hubbard that really did go and pitch on national television to MSNBC this garbage that he's pitching. Hubbard published Dianetics in May 1950. Where's the quote of Hubbard getting convicted and indicted and him running away with 12-year-old Shelly Miscavige inside a ship floating away? Where's that quote? Why is that quote missing from here, MSNBC? Will attain spiritual happiness and how to deal with problems in the day to day world. So, spiritual happiness and how to solve problems on the day to day world. So, what type of problems were you solving when children were locked against their will, Mike Rinder? Because that would be great to so super understand that in a very conceptual way today that we're not children 
that are in, you know, adult bodies. Imagine that we are literal adults in adult bodies now and that we're not children that are purported adults. Because that's the type of rhetoric pitched in the books that you are saying lead to a lot of happiness. So in what world is telling a child that they are an adult leading to a lot of happiness and spiritual growth? That would be great to you to start putting on the public record to quickly call up your pals at NBC and say, oh, you know what? That pitch I gave you back in the day would love to do another interview really quickly because, you know, I would love to set the record actually straight for once in my life. So by all means, why don't you just, you know, hit them up? It'd be great for you to do that. So, you know, anybody can apply those principles. You know, what, what about um, we were just talking about this disconnection uh, that we were just hearing about from Janet? Is there something like disconnection where people basically have a choice between their family and their loved ones or the church? No, there isn't. That, that's a that's a real misconception that she had. I mean, again, do you guys see with what ease this man can lie? How many contradictory statements are there to this man lying with a straight face? The straight, oh, that's disconnection. Imagine disconnection is not the toxic policy. Imagine children, in this case, having deranged child traffic hearing Parents need to disconnect from their parents. Imagine your parents put you in harm's way. Imagine they are not looking out for your best interest. Imagine they are pretending that you are an adult. Imagine that that is the toxicity of Scientology, that your parents become so compromised that you really shouldn't have anything to do with them anymore. A la Ruby Frankie, a la Lori De Ballo, a la every last complete unhinged parent that is out there committing crimes against their own kids. Yes. In fact, one of the fundamentals of Scientology is communication, establishing communication, uh, putting families together, reestablishing relationships. And that's something that, uh, that she will find that a lot of Scientologists do. They establish much better relationships with their family, in fact. But are they cut uh, off? They establish much better relationships with their family, in fact. I mean, again, you guys, you've seen the contradictory statements this man makes with a full straight face. And believe you me, he had no merits or facts to be speaking like this. Because you know what? He wasn't, you know, in the hole right about here. So he had plenty of an idea of what went on inside the Scientology orgs. All of them knew, you guys, all of them were executives. All of them wanted receipts. All of them wanted to document their behavior, acting with full impunity on a day-to-day -day basis, making all the wrong choices, doing all the illegal choices. And then just coming here with MSNBC, they're going to sanitize our image. We're going to send this man out. He's going to blab his mouth. And then all of a sudden, everyone's going to go, oh, yeah, L. Ron Hubbard. Wasn't he such an American bread god? You know, I, I, I just want to show another little quote. This is from the Rolling Stone. It says, uh, this is from someone who's trying to sort of leave a group within the church. And it said, hard physical labor and intense ideological study are used to break a subject's will. Uh, it sounds like sort of like you're, you're sort of forced to stay or forced to go. Is that the case? No, no, that's not the case at all, Rita. You know no, 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 that's not the case at all, Rita. Really, Mike Rinder, why was I being made to wash bathrooms with muriatic acid for, you know, quite a few months before I was able to leave. In what world are you lying straight through your teeth, Mike Rinder? In what world are you going to pretend that you had no idea what the route out line 
consisted of? You know, the, the little stories that are contained in the Rolling Stone article really miss the point. Uh, a number of them are really anonymous stories. What the point are was any of them that true? That article Mike? missed. No, no, they're not. They're so they're not true. The stories that are in the Rolling Stone article are not true. They're all lies, according to Mike Rinder. Isn't that interesting, Mike Rinder, that you always have a knack to call things out that you have no idea what in the hell you're talking about or, you know, reversely, you do have an idea what in the hell you're talking about, but you're playing dumb on national TV. Imagine you're still playing dumb as we speak. Imagine being you. They're not. They're, they're, they're literally made up stories. Rita, you got to understand that. The, what Made up stories. You guys see that there's all these people here doing the so-called courses. Do you guys understand that we were literally stuck with adults, with grown adults? We were mixed. We were mingled with adults. Starting at age 12, starting at age 11, starting at age 10, starting at age 9, starting at age 14, starting at age 15, 16. Why were children stuck inside these commercial buildings doing courses with adults, grooming us with dolls? You really have to drill this. You really have to do it on a doll. You're really going to have to figure out how to save a world by getting groomed to be abused using a doll. So by all means, Mike Rinder, make that part make sense. What was disappointing about that article is the amount of access that Janet was given. She was able to talk to thousands of Scientologists. In fact, she set up and had an interview with Kirstie Alley. She had an interview with Kelly Preston. She had an interview with a number of, of Scientologists who had grown up in the religion. Uh, none of those things made it into the article. Well, isn't that great, you guys? The first thing that we do agree with you, Mike, literal render. So Janet, that wrote a whole book about this from Rolling Stones, Janet got what got to speak with thousands of people that even were born in. Imagine if we wanted to give the corporate media the benefit of the doubt, you guys. Mike Winder just ripped that apart for them. Because Mike Winder just told us that Janet from the Rolling Stones apparently spoke to thousands of people that grew up in Scientology. Imagine you are Janet and you're being given access to all these kids that grew up in Scientology and you cannot pull a single shred of string. You're just, you know, confused and write a whole article about this and that and the other and you missed the point. That extremist, radicalized, ideologue, demagogues from literal hell were donating their kids willy nilly. She had interviews with people who are engaged in our social betterment programs, our drug rehabilitation program, educational programs. None of those made it in the article. None of those were L. Ron Hubbard's ideas. All of those were you and Monique and whoever in the hell Marty Rathbun was concocting ways to pitch this not nonprofit, this racketeering scheme, this fraud written institution that you pitched to the IRS was a very religious place. A lot of religion was going to take place inside of a hotel, Mike Rinder. Make it make sense right now how you pitch makes a shred of literal sense. In what world was locking children up against their will? Having that video recorded, having all of you watching having access to a looking system to willy-nilly check in on whoever and whoever's 
session you wanted to spy on. As if OSA doesn't have full access, as if RTC doesn't have full access, as if all the technical, so-called technical senior CSK supervisors of Debbie Cook's child trafficking hotel didn't have full access to all the video recording, to all the cameras. Everybody was watching. Everybody was seeing. Everybody was listening. It's called the looking system. What part of that are you taking a shred of accountability for today, Mike Winder? How can you continue to put so much stuff at arm's length? Because that would be great to understand how that's actually getting accomplished. How are you so out of touch with reality? How are you so delusional pitching all this whitewashing to MSNBC with a full-blown straight face? So the article doesn't really tell anybody what Scientology is or why people are in Scientology or what they find that Scientology brings them. Michael what Scientology brings them is unfeathered access to children, but I'm sure that's not the answer you were looking to be reported on. Huh, Mike Rinder? Imagine that these women literally are eating out of the palm of your literal hand. Imagine you just put your little accent and your little smirk and you blab a lot about this in social betterment and da 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 da, and all you're doing is spewing your paper clips all over the hell. And since no one's been inside the hotel, well, you know what? No one's going to be able to call me out because whatever I say here in my stupid little disgusting suit, clowning my way around this interview, purporting to come across very relatable, but you know what? You couldn't be less relatable in this year 2024, Mike Grinder. So your jig is literally up. Let me, so let me show you. It really wasn't. A let me, because I'll get you to talk about it, because I do think it's interesting, the points that you make. And I want to show, like you talked about, you know, John Travolta, uh, Kelly Preston, um, who was Tom Cruise, of course, Kirstie Alley. Uh, Jen so let's add these to Scientology's Hall of Fame. Um, you know, we should put Don Schneider up in there in the stars. We should put, you know, P. Diddy up in there in the stars. And we should put, you know, Jeffrey and Jelaine up there in the stars. I mean, is there a pattern here? What in the hell is going on in Hollywood? What in the hell is going on with all these so called stars? Were they really stars? Or are they all compromised? Are they up to their neck and ears in blackmail? Because they're all members of that disgusting hotel. And Elfman, um, these are some of the prominent ones. Why are celebrities and, uh, and also then why are the average person drawn to Scientology? What is it? Well, I think that everybody finds something that solves problems in their life, a way of attaining spiritual enlightenment, spiritual freedom. I mean, it's disgusting, you guys. You've seen the video now. You've seen what they were having children be asking grown adults. Where is the spiritual enlightenment happening? In what world is that leading to a shred of spiritual enlightenment? Mike Rinder, Katie Holmes, Tom Cruise, all of you, OTs, all of you, Elwin Howard's protégés, all of you, silent, complicit, in industrial abuse of minors, industrial scale, not one, not two, not just a few, a ton, decades, we're talking decades, all of these men and women, grown adults, when they got involved, grown adults consented to be part of the racketeering scheme is what it's called. Once they entered the criminal conspiracy, they were inside the criminal conspiracy. 
They didn't leave the criminal conspiracy. They continued to donate money towards the criminal conspiracy. And Mike Rinder was in there, you know, brokering whatever in the hell needed to be done so that that money could arrive at a bank account so they could really continue to amass money to really, really save a world on the backs of underage kids. Tools to use to improve relationships, to to deal with upsets, to deal with things that perhaps you don't know where they come from, why it is that you feel the way that you do. Yeah, why was it the way that a child felt away, Mike Rinder, when they were told that the L2D was their fault? So reframing all the felonies that you were all about data mining inside your disgusting hotels is all you ever did. You never helped anyone. You never literally cared. And we have the receipts to show you right here how much you little didn't care. Why you react to things in a fashion that you don't feel is an appropriate reaction. I yeah. So every time we tell you, oh, they were desensitizing us after we were getting out to deed. Which at this point, all of you should know what out to deed means. But in case you don't know, it's including but not limited to. Right? So this is what we're talking about, Mike Rinder. So if someone didn't feel a certain type of way about a certain type of situationship, then what? What was done when this was discovered, when the so-called out to D, the fake euphemism that you and your buddies used to cover up what you can see in the literal piece of paper right in front of you, right in front of you, Mike Rinder? Why? How? What technology was being utilized to so-called float this away? Float it. Why did you call it float it? Why did you call it float it, Mike Rinder? Why did that happen? Why? I think that there are a lot of artists in Scientology because artists are the leader. They, they tend to be leaders in society. They are on the cutting edge. They're looking for new ways. They don't follow the status quo. Well, thank you, Mike Rinder, for telling us that these artists, these leaders, John Travolta, including but not limited to Tom Cruise, including but not limited to Katie Holmes, Jenna Offman, Christy Alley, they were all about not following the status quo. So are the child trafficking laws status quo? Asking for a friend. Because you know what? Let's really find out if the literal child trafficking laws are what y'all are, you know, going with. Oh, that's just the status quo. Those are just the laws that apply to those ones over there, not us. We can do whatever we want inside of our hotel. And they might I want to be fair to because a lot of people are saying new. a lot of people are saying it's about money because it does cost a lot, especially to attain the sort of level three that we were talking about. You know, some critics say it was it in, in uh, Janet's article two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. One woman was quoted spending over twenty years. Is is it about uh, those who have money that can donate to the church? What do you say to critics who say that? Oh, I say that, that that's completely inaccurate. One can be a member of the Church of Scientology and. Why do you have to lie? I would say that that's completely inaccurate. It does take how much money to get to OT3, Mike Rinder. Why do you lie about stuff that is literally so obvious you're lying? Complete liar. Oh, no, that's not happening. Oh, no, $250,000 is a lie. 
involved in Scientology activities without donating anything. One, you can get it from reading the books, as I said, and studying and understanding the principles that are contained in those books and applying them to your life. Certainly there are people that donate money to the Church of Scientology. It's a reflection of what they feel they get out of Scientology. Am I what? Isn't that great, you guys? So thank you so much, Mike Rinder. Now we know. So if anyone is wondering why these people were donating so much money to Scientology. It was a reflection of what they were getting out of it. So go back through the list of public high paying donors, all those adults that have left the hotels and find out how much money they donated because according to how much money they've donated, now we have from Mike Rinder, head of OSA, a direct statement that talks about how, you know, if they donated $2.5 million, then just imagine what they were getting out of it. So the donations are correlated to, you know, how much are you getting out of it? So how much did you, oh, here, oh, a million dollars. That's what, what, what did you get out of it for a million dollars? What did you get out of it for $2.5 million of so-called donations? What do you ask the people who are at... Why do people, why is there sort of this mystique and, and why do people, some, you know, fear the, the religion? Oh, I don't think that people fear the religion. I think that people just don't understand it. I think that people... Oh, I don't think people fear the religion. They just don't understand it. Well, yeah, and thanks to you, they keep not understanding it. Thanks to you, they keep being misguided because you're trying to sanitize the completely indefensible and unsanitizable. You ensnared children inside your hotel scheme at an industrial size scale. You confiscated and locked up passports. You video recorded and checked and verified and participated in knowing everything that was being data mined out of the sessions, including but not limited to self-admitted felonies that you monetized. All happened inside of the hotel, all tied to what you just told us, the donations that were being what? Given by the people that donated according to what they were getting out of it. So the truth is already out there, you guys, because these people cannot help themselves, but actually be telling on themselves, except that, you know, we don't have any reporters that have a shred of critical thinking skills inside of their head. They don't do any pushback. They don't do any follow-up questions. They just regurgitate back whatever Mike Rinder says to them and then whatever, you know, other opinion they heard and then they just leave it all up in the air and then have a great life and kids being trafficked inside of the hotels. Better luck next lifetime. People have misinformation uh, from stories like you read in the media that blow things up into sensational proportions, it's easy to really find out what Scientology is. It's very, very simple. One just need to walk into a bookstore or a library, get a book, walk into a church of Scientology, find out for yourself. Once you find out what Scientology really is, what it offers people, the solutions that it offers to life in today's world, there's nothing scary about it at all. We're joined now. There's nothing scary about it at all, says Mike Rinder. Well, think about that fake pitch today, Mike Rinder, because the video that we just published two days ago shows that it is very scary. And we should have been scared as kids. We were petrified. We were terrorized by y'all. And scary is the word. Scary on steroids, scary on crack. No kid inside of those hotels liked it. No matter how much you and your goons, the rest of your buddies, all in your network, a vast network at that. 
So it took a lot of people to pull this off, you guys. And we're going to continue bringing you all the receipts that don't match. So Mike Rinder, start coming clean and stop giving paperclip withholds. Nobody gives an F about your short stories anymore. Nobody has the bandwidth or gives an F about your delusions. So stop being delusional, stop playing dumb, and actually start setting the record literally straight. Now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys extremely soon. Bye-bye.